just lift your hands. Let me see you. Praise God. Wasn't that amazing? Praise God. We just want to thank God for what he has been doing since we started this. It's just been amazing. So many people have been healed, delivered. Praise God. We're seeing the Bible come alive. Amen. And the faith of many being renewed and restored. And for that, we give God the glory. Amen. Praise God. Let's all stand to our feet. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Him for His goodness. Thank Him for His mercy. Thank Him for His loving kindness. Hallelujah. Father, we thank You. We thank You for all that You have done in this place. We thank You for what You're going to do today. Father, we thank You for those on their way. We thank You. We thank You, oh God. We are so grateful. We are so grateful for Your love and Your mercy, oh God. You have been so amazing, God. You are wonderful and we give You praise. We thank You, Father. Father, Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Have your way, oh God. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place and we ask you to have your way this morning. Have your way, Lord God. Do what only you can do in this place. We worship you. We adore you. We thank you, oh God. You are wonderful, Lord. You are amazing, Father. There is no one like you. No one like you, oh God. We give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and worship the Lord with me. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless you. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. There is no one like you. Excellent Jehovah, no one like you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory and all the honor. For indeed you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Worthy are you, O oh Lord God. We worship you this morning. Oh, let everything that has breath Praise the Lord for his good and his mercy endures forever. He is good and his mercy endures forever. Thank you, my Father. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Majesty, we worship you. King of glory, we worship you. of days we worship we worship you we worship we worship hallelujah 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 we give you all the glory hallelujah we give you all the praise hallelujah blessed be your name blessed be your name blessed be your name blessed be your name Father, we worship you. We worship you. You are so good. You are so good. So good. So good. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. Hallelujah. In the midst of them. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is here. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you this morning. The Bible says in the book of Romans that God works all things together for the good of those who love him 
Hallelujah. And who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. All things work together for good. Hallelujah. Praise God. So it doesn't matter what your situation is. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter the sickness or disease. Hallelujah. All things will work together for good. What the devil meant for evil, God is going to turn it around for good. God is going to turn it around for good. Those of you who are healed and are going to be healed, God will turn it around for good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So be encouraged this morning. Hallelujah. You are here by divine purpose. Amen. This is beyond just coming for healing. God is looking for people who will go out into the world and touch the world with the power of God. Amen. Praise God. When I see Pastor Billy, I'm so encouraged. He's such a man of humility and love. Hallelujah. Most of you don't know, this is his second time in New York, and this is our first time in Long Island, but God is speaking about this place, and I believe that this is not just a, a meeting just for us to be healed, but God is preparing his church for what he wants to do in this part of the country. Hallelujah. Praise God. So last year, we met Pastor Billy last year, and uh, he'd never seen us before. And uh, the Lord spoke to us. It was a vision. And um, we invited him to New York. The vision was go and invite him to New York and we'd never met him before and it looked impossible and actually it was. Uh, we're a small church in Queens just to tell you and we've never met him before but we went believing the visions of God. Hallelujah. And when we got there, very unusual, he said everyone who's out of state stand up and we stood and and we stood and we stood and we stood. At a point I sat down, I was like, oh my God, I'm so tired, you know? And then finally he got to us and he pointed to both of us and he said, come. And so when we came up to the front, um, he said, so who are you? I said, we're from New York. He said, New York. I said, so what can I do for you? How can I help you? And we said, we want you to come to New York. And then he said, New York? I said, yes. And he said, where? I said, Queens. He said, Queens? He was like really surprised and he laughed. But as usual, he walked away. You know, sometimes when he walks away, you don't know what he's doing, right? So he walked away and I said, oh God, oh God. You know? So um, he came back and he said, I see revival. He's never seen us before. Never met us. We didn't know who he was. It was just, we followed the visions of God. You are sitting in a vision. This is not just a meeting. God is preparing us for an outpouring that is coming this way. Amen? It's going to touch the churches. At a point, he's going to be... Um, I saw him with pastors having um, meetings with pastors, teaching them how to go and do the work of the ministry. Amen? There's a lot that God is going to do through Pastor Billy in the Northeast. Amen. Praise God. So I want you to take this seriously. Amen. This is about the kingdom of God. This is about the end times. This is about preparing the church of God. Hallelujah. And when he told us, you know, he, he, he turned and then he came back and he said, I will come to New York. And it was, it was, it was just amazing. Then after that, we were like, wow, he said, it's coming. So we went back to New York and we told our church. And, you know, I just want to thank God for the Abiding Word family. Thank God, thank God, thank God for the Abiding Word family. Praise God. They received the vision of God. They stood with our man of God, Pastor Chu. Everybody supported this. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if you're a small church. It doesn't matter your size. If you can believe God, hallelujah. If you can step out in faith, if you can trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Hallelujah. That's exactly what happened. We believe God. I'm telling you, the, the ladies, the older ladies were having 
cake sales and doing all kinds of things and raising money. Everybody got into it, the whole church, fasting and praying and trusting God. And to the glory of God, we had the first New York Healing and Miracle Crusade last year in August in Queens, New York. And this year, it's happening here in Long Island. Hallelujah. Birth by the visions of God. And like I said yesterday, I believe that God is touching other pastors, telling them it is possible. Let this be an encouragement to anyone to believe God if God is saying it. If God is showing you, believe God and step out. Trust Him for everything. Trust Him. He will put the right people in place. He will do what He has to do. Remember, it's about the kingdom of God. It's not about you. And, and it's about your obedience to the visions of God. When we stepped out, we weren't sure. I mean, in our hearts, we had never done anything like that before. We had never, ever had a, a crusade that big. It was amazing, but God did it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So let this be an encouragement to you. Praise God, wherever you are, believe in God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. And I really want to say thank you, even though they're not here, but thank God for Pastor Billy and Miss Melanie and oh, Bonnie and the team. They are amazing. They are amazing. They made us feel like family. And we'd never seen them or known them, but they were just amazing, full of love. Hallelujah. Always listening and sharing and encouraging. I thank God for them. And I believe that this is not the last time we're going to be in Long Island. Amen. God is going to take this around New York and New York City. And I'm trusting that other pastors are going to come and work with us. Because this is bigger than just the Abiding Word Ministries. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. So know that you are in God's vision. And if you are here, God has a plan for you. Praise God. Let's welcome our praise team. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Shout praise the Lord, everybody. Shout praise the Lord, everybody. Shall we praise the Lord, everybody? This is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice and be glad in him. Because it, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here today. And we just want to say, God, we thank you for life. We thank you for your blessings. And we thank you for the works that you're about to do in, in each of our lives today, God. We just ask that you dwell with us today as we sing praises to you, O God. Accept our sacrifice of praise as we offer it to you, O God. In your name I pray. Are you ready to give God some praise today? Are you ready to give God some praise today? Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah! Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing with me, praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah! For God, for God is our King. Troubles in your life, when, when troubles in your life, sing praises. What we do it when when troubles in your life, sing praises. Sing hallelujah. Say when troubles in your life, sing praises. When troubles in your life, sing praises. Hallelujah. My God, for God is our King.
troubles in the camp, when troubles in the lies we praise him. What we do is say, when troubles in the lies we praise him. Sing hallelujah. Trouble in your life, when troubles in your lies we praise him. Day that the 
This is the day, yeah, yeah. This is the day. That's how I'm feeling. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. And I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Yeah. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. offer this song to you God to let you know how much we love you today because your mercies are always so constant you never cease to fail us God so we lift this offering to you today Jesus hallelujah to let, just let you know I love you Lord for your mercies never failing sing with me in all my days, I've been left in your hand. Oh, from the moment that I wake up, till I lay, till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest nights you are close like no other I know you as my father I know you as a father I know you as I know you as a friend
is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running, God. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. One more time, your goodness, your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness been running. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. See my your goodness is running. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Oh, with my mind made up, I surrender now. I give you everything. Oh, your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my mind made up, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so. Believe for it. Let's sing that song. Believe for it. Lift your hands up, and I just thank you for this morning. Just thank you for this morning. God, we believe. We believe for miracles this morning. God, we for miracles this morning. For it. Yes, Lord. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe.
lift up your hands, everybody. Say, God, I believe for it today. I believe for my miracle this morning. I believe for it today. I believe for my miracle. I believe for it this morning. I believe for it this morning. Today is my day of change. Oh, come on, shout. Just come on, just, just bless your God. God, we believe just bless you. for it. Clap hands for Jesus Christ. Let's clap hands for Jesus Christ, everybody. Hallelujah. I want you to take your seat for two minutes. Take your seat for two minutes. Ryan. Hallelujah. I want to show you a three-minute video clip before I invite. Uh... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to watch this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many of us have been enjoying these services? Wasn't last night awesome? Wasn't it amazing? Wasn't it amazing? Wasn't it amazing? Let's give our God a big shout out for everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of us are expecting this morning? That God will touch your life. God will do something wonderful in your life. In your body. In your situation. In your heart this morning. Say, I believe God. Shout, I believe God. One more time, shout, I believe God. One last time, shout, I believe God. Tonight, say this morning, this morning, this morning, I believe God for my change. I believe God for a fresh start upon my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Come and say amen, everybody. Come and say amen, everybody. Hallelujah. Move your hand and just thank him. Just thank him. Just thank him. Awesome God. Come on, just bless him. Just bless him. Come on, just bless him. Awesome God. Amazing God. Awesome God. Amazing God. I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I give you praise. Come on, just thank him. Just bless him. Just bless him. Just bless him. Just bless him. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, bless him. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's welcome a spread of worship team. Thank you. Come on, I want you to stand and let's bless the Lord together today, amen?
little praise today, amen. And
rest upon His word. Here we go. Beautiful. With. Come on, give him a shout. Come on. I'm not hearing everybody. Come on. Come on. No hitchhikers this morning. And no hitchhikers tonight. When we say everybody give him the praise. Can, can I tell you something? There's a reason why when you get examined by a doctor or a nutritionist and they say you're short on vitamin D. If you run vitamin D through your system, you're going to feel better. There's a reason why that doctor says if you just get an extra hour of sleep, if you just take a little bit of this supplement, listen to me. Whenever we say sing, the Holy Spirit is saying, run this through your system. You know, when you sing, when you sing, when you sing, not only is you singing with your mouth, when you inhale praise, it touches every organ in your body. Would you like your spleen to get some worship today? How about your liver today? The reason smoking is so deadly is because when you inhale that nicotine, it goes all through your system. It touches everything. Any heart surgeon will tell you there's nothing that compromises your body more than nicotine. Going through your, you inhale, it touches everything, and then you bring it out here and want to share it with the rest of us. Come on, say, no, thank you. But when you inhale praise, I mean, whenever you're singing, your heart's right in there with it. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Lord, help me know you. Are near. Sing it with me. You're all I want. Come on, you're all. You're all I've ever needed. Isn't that the truth? Come on. You're all I want. Help me know. Help me know you are near. Come on, a little louder, a little higher. Come on. You're all. Every hand up, help me know. Help me know you are me. Come on, give God a big shout this morning. Come on, every hand up all over the place. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you here today. We thank you for a new day. Lamentations 323 says, Your mercies are new every day every morning new mercies fresh oil oh we thank you for that this morning I pray today that you would just release the pressure drive back the devils heal our bodies bring peace back into the depth of our heart and give us all a vision and a purpose as we walk out of here today let us discover the portion and the purpose you have for each one of us. Come on, say, God has a portion for me. Come on, say, God has grace just for me to do what he's called me to do. I will do a mighty work for Jesus. I will help bring in the harvest. 
I will demonstrate the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Give him a thunder of praise. Come on. Give somebody a hallelujah hug and then have a seat. Great, great. Awesome. Oh, my God. Awesome. Where's my Bible? Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, this is the morning session. This is Saturday morning church. How many is ready for Saturday morning? How many? I think more is ready on this side than over here. Oh, yours beautiful. How many was in the meeting last night? Is the girl from Star Nucky Nicolette? Is she here this morning? She works at Starbucks. I went to Starbucks this morning. Uh, ben and I, we, we went over there to get a cup of coffee early. And uh, so I said to the girl, I'll take a, you know, the coffee. And she said, I saw you last night. And I said, you did? Where did you see me? She said, I was in that service. I said, you were. Now, there's people all around her, her fellow workers. She didn't give a holy hoot. She was talking like out loud, and she said to me, she said, that was something. I said, well, what was your favorite miracle? Did you have a favorite miracle? And she said, yes. When that boy was on the stage, and she said, I don't know what disease he had, but he just fell under the power, and you didn't even touch him. And she said, oh, my, I thought about that all night. And I'm watching her and her fellow, and they're pretending like they're not listening, but they're like, come on, say, I have a shadow. I have the power of influence. I can affect people forever. I can affect people for good, for healing, hope, and health. God's got something for me to do. Come on, give him a mighty, mighty praise. So I don't know which church she goes to, if she's part of your church, but I said, what's your name? She said, Nicolette. So that's why I asked if Nicolette was here. I said, you're going to be there this morning. She said, well, probably be right here serving coffee. But she said, I'm probably going to make it tomorrow night. So maybe tonight we can get her here to share a little bit what that. It's important that, you've, that you figure out how to convey what something means to you going to quit saying, do you tell your wife you love her? Ah, but she knows. What do you mean she knows? Ah, she knows I love her. That's not the point if she knows it. It's good to hear it. It's good to be communicated, to bring reassurance to people. Why? The devil's working on everybody. He's trying to chisel away at your faith. As you get older, he's trying to make it sound like, well, that was for when you were young. But as you get older, everybody loses their sight. Everybody loses hearing. Everybody doesn't sleep all night. Every man gets up three times a night to, to go to the bathroom. And that's just life. That is the old life. You better look at the new covenant. You better look at it. I do have a Bible that's right here. How many brought a Bible this morning? Oh, three people. Three people. How many have your wife's Bible at least? Come on. There you go. You should always bring it, even though maybe we don't have you turn into it. Last night I said the story of the woman with the issue. And I gave you the chapter in case you get a recording of this service because everything we do comes out of the written word. The gifts of the Spirit all come out of here. The anointing, it all comes out of here. The worship we worship with comes out of here. Come on, say in the beginning was the word and he spoke it he framed the world with his words so everything if it doesn't come out of here don't listen to it walk away from it don't drink the Kool-Aid but boy whenever you're hearing something and you say where's the basis for that right here out of this written word there's nothing quite like it what's the Bible saying it's the more sure word of prophecy in this day when so many people are saying so many things, 
and they're on all the programs. Speaking of the programs, tonight, well, you'll be here, of course. But if you weren't here, I'm going to be on Daystar Network, a special presentation tonight at what time, hon? Central Time, 8.30. No, Central Time is 8.30. They can watch the stream. That's my wife. She just says, you can watch the stream. Just Google it, she said. She's the lady with the hat up here. She is the lady with the hat. You know, don't you just feel better when you wake up, Tina, Kathy, when you wake up two Kathys, when you wake up and you, you've been in the presence, not just the presence of CNN or Fox, not the presence of even just a CD you're listening, but you get up and you're in the presence. There's something about that. It just, it strengthens you. Come on, put your hands up with me today. Say, I need more of that. I need more anointing. I can get that anointing all by myself. All I got to do is raise my hands when I get out of bed. Let the anointing fall. Let your presence guide me. Shine your ever-loving light on my path for today. I cannot do this by myself. Oh, I'm so weak in myself. I'm nothing in me. Oh, but I'm everything in you. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him one more praise. Can you do that? Amen. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians. I just love that worship this morning. Wasn't that powerful? Yeah. So beautiful to worship. These singers up behind me, Bruce and Lisa, David and Kirsten Hart, these, these are the best of the best, I'll tell you. They're in New York today. They are in New York. My pages are all sticking together, and then something else. There we go. Ephesians chapter 3. And you're going to learn something today, I hope. Chapter 3, verse 1, it says here, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for, your, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how what revelation he might make known to me the mystery, as I wrote afore in just a few words. Verse number one says, he told the Ephesians, he said, I am a prisoner of the Lord. See, everything around you talks to you. Your car talks to you. Your house talks to you. Your body talks to you. Your body says, you don't feel good. Your body says, sometimes you got cancer like your sister. Yeah, she had breast cancer, and you're going to get breast cancer. Your body talks to you. Your checkbook really <laughs> talks to you. You know, there's stores at the mall that talk to you. They say, you can't afford to come in here. And you sing that famous Dion Warwick song, walk on by. <laughs> just walk on by. And you just walk on by because that store tells you you can't afford anything in this store. And you listen to that voice. Those car dealerships, I mean, you know, those high-end cars, the Bentley, the Mercedes, the, the top shelf Lexuses, the Bugattis. How many know what a Bugatti is? One person knows what a Bugatti is. Because it's out of most people's bracket. You don't even think about going into those dealerships. So what do you do? You drive on by. <laughs> you either drive on by or you walk on by. And you begin to live this restricted life because these voices are talking to you and you never answer them. You accept what they tell you. You're not pretty enough. Your credit score isn't good enough. 
your body isn't strong enough. Your body's always saying you're not 35 anymore. Come on. And, and we don't, we leave everything go unchecked. Paul said, I'm not a prisoner to my car. I'm not a prisoner to, to my body. I'm not a prisoner to my circumstances. I'm not stuck in a dead-end job. My God could bail me out of here any second of any moment of any day. This tumor could leave in the next 30 seconds. I could find my beautiful husband when I walk out of this room. Whoever thought you could find him in a parking lot? Come on, somebody help me. But when you're living on the edge of expectancy, you got to begin to believe anywhere, at any time, at any moment, that flashpoint of the miraculous can take place. In the routine, listen to me, say it, routine. In the routine of your life, not in a special meeting like this. In the routine, just going to the well to get water. That's all she did. She's just going to the well, routine, just to get water. And she runs into this guy who just starts talking to her. And pretty soon, the conversation got so powerful, she just dropped her water pot. She forgot why she even went to the well. And she said, my God, he's told me everything I've ever known. Just in the routine of going to your mailbox, going over there to Walmart to pick up some hairspray, getting your nails done in that horrible smell of the aroma. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Just getting your nails all done, not thinking about nothing. And right there could be the point of intervention. See, he's everywhere. And you never quite know where he's going to show up and heal your mind, heal your arthritis. You just quite never know. God wants to shock you with some goodness. But if all you're looking for, if you have him confined to a building, if you have him hanging out, I got to go to church and meet God, then you are restricting the flow of a presence that's available 24-7, and you don't want to do that. I was in a meeting in Tampa, Florida, oh, maybe a year or so ago. I've been in this 45 years. I've never had happened what happened in this meeting. I'm learning that God has so much for us to discover. I mean, he's bigger than the alphabet. He's bigger than A-E-I-O-U and sometimes Y. He's bigger than all that. And I'm praying for people up at the altars. We had a pretty great crowd that night. And I'd pray for this. And I went to pray for this one person. Listen to me. And I felt my arm in another person's arm. I thought, well, what's that? And I could feel the sleeve of the robe. And I, it, it scared me for a moment. I thought, maybe I'm hallucinating. And I touched this person. They went under the power. And I pulled my arm back. And then I was in, an, I was in another arm over here. I was inside... Somehow I got inside of the Holy Ghost. I've never had that experience. I thought I've had a lot of experiences. And I have. Oh, I have. But this was a new one. Tell your neighbor, God's got something new for you today. Come on. But there's something that you already have, and it's a weapon. It's a secret weapon, but you're not using it. And that is, and that is it's good in some ways to just be defiant about some things. If you're going to beat something, you've got to beat it on the inside. You've got to be defiant on the inside. Paul said, I'm not, he was chained to a Roman guard. He was in... Rome as a prisoner to Caesar and to Nero. They didn't like his preaching. They didn't like his miracles. And they said, we're going to put you out of commission. You know, if we have to create a virus, come on, to shut you up. If we have to shut down every campaign you do, whatever we got to do, we're going to chain you up. Here's Paul chained to a centurion. And he says to the people there, I'm not a prisoner of this guy. Well, it looks like you are. Looks like you're smoking like crazy, 
drinking like crazy, into pornography 24-7. Sure, from this vantage point, it looks like it. You know, a lot of times, right before you get delivered, you're into something hot and heavy. That's why you get delivered. You don't get delivered because you're not doing nothing. You don't get delivered because you're already free. You get delivered because something's dominating your thinking. You're chained to a past memory. You're chained to a diagnosis. You know, you're chained to a bottle that says, I have to take this three times a day. It's, it gets inside of you. And Paul was defiant. He said, I know it looks like I'm a prisoner to you. And Caesar think he has me, but he don't have me. He don't have my heart. He don't have my thinking. He certainly don't have my soul. So you have my body. I'm not your prisoner. I'm not a prisoner to the diagnosis. I know that's what you said, and I know what you said will happen, but I'm not a prisoner to that. I'm a prisoner to, by his stripes, I... Somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on. Come on. But I swear that everything... I mean, if I go, if I go like when I go to a Starbucks... I go in there to, if I don't go drive through, and I'll go in there to get a coffee. When I walk by the pastries, they all talk to me. <laughs> they do. They just talk to me. If I just look at a blueberry scone, it'll say, take me home. <laughs> Some of the brownies say, take me and my friends with you. <laughs> and it's like they're so convincing. They even say things like, you need me this morning. I'm your best friend. I'm your BFF. Come on, somebody. And I'm thinking, that can't be true. And if I leave them all talk, if I leave them talk to me and get to me, then I say, ah, what's, what's a brownie? What's a blueberry scone? Well, it elevates your blood sugar. It's not really healthy for you to do that in the morning. But if I listen, and I'm a prisoner to that, if I'm a prisoner while I'm on my internet and a pop-up comes up, you know, I just pop up and I shouldn't be looking at it, but there it is. After all, I didn't click it. It popped up. <laughs> Come on, say, I'm innocent. Come on, say, I'm innocent. <laughs> Honey, it just popped up. I don't know where that thing came from. It just popped up. But if I happen to pop up and then dial in, come on, somebody. If I let it talk to me, it can destroy a whole year's worth of prayer and preparation. It can undo a trail of what God is preparing you for. How many believe he's preparing you for something greater than where you are? Come on, see, I'm getting healed for a purpose. I'm getting money for a reason. God's about to give me a God idea, a, a God assignment. I am not going to miss this for anything. I'm not after cheap. Come on, I'm after expensive. Come on, give him a mighty praise here in this room. Zachariah said, I'm a prisoner of hope. You see, he was living in a day whenever they were saying there'll never be another temple. There'll never be another holy people. He was around all kind of negative family members. <laughs> What are you doing reading that Bible? What are you going down there listening to that preacher for? How much money you give in the church? There's a lot of people that don't believe they're, they're, they're enemies of the cross, they're enemies of the Word of God, and they, they're just so miserable they want you to join them. Because the thought that what we're doing in here is right is scary. There's people watching you to see, do you benefit from being here? Are you any happier? Are you any more prosperous? Do you still use the walker? Do you still use the cane? Do you still use the hearing aid? Are you still sad six days a week? Come on, somebody. They're watching you. And, and, and I'll tell you what, there's nothing that'll talk louder to the people who, you won't even have to say anything. But when they see you without a cane, when they see you without a limp, 
when they see you walking up, they get the newspaper, and you just stretch, and you go, I'm a they can't hear what you're saying, but nobody walks outside their house and does all that. They're going to be saying, honey, she's on drugs. I know she's on drugs. And you're on the drug of the Holy Ghost. Come on, give him a big shout here today. But you've got to become defiant on the inside. You've got to become defiant. I'm not biting at this. I don't believe that. I mean, when I'm watching television, when I do watch it, I usually watch it late after I get home from a meeting or something, and there's always a commercial that says, one out of every four black men in America. Well, you're not talking to me. Well, number one, because I'm white. Come on, say amen. <laughs> but sometimes they go over there and they'll say, one out of every six white men over the age of 45. Well, that does apply to me. And, I, and then, then you, what are they saying? When, when they get into what they're saying, you will explain, whoa, 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 time out. No, 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 you're not talking to me. No, no, I'm not a prisoner to your commercial. I'm not a prisoner to your commercial. No, no. And, you, and if they say black people, you're not, a you're not a prisoner to that. Come on, say no, no. But you have to respond to that. You can't let those seeds just go over here and fall on your ground. you got to say, I'm not a prisoner to television, to the commercial. I'm not a prisoner to somebody like that. That's who I used to be. I used to be a chain smoker. Then I used to be just a smoker. Now I don't have a smoke or a chain. Come on, say, I am free. Come on, say, I am free. I got delivered. The hold the devil had on me, he don't got no more. Come on, give him a shout here today. But you got to make sure who you're a prisoner to. If you stay a prisoner to your ex-husband, oh, there's one right there. Oh, we're touching close. Now, or your ex-wife, or your ex-mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Every time, every time that preacher says, I tell you, there's a witch, there's a witchcraft, you think of her. See, that's not supposed to be that way. When you forgive somebody and you release them, you don't connect them to everything bad. Come on, your heart changes. And you say, man, there's even hope for the people that hurt me. There's even hope for the people that abused me. I'm not going to get into that trap. I'm not stepping down on a lower life scale. Come on, I'm coming up to where the master is. Come on, can you give him praise? Come on, say, I'm not a prisoner to my past. I did that. I was part of that. I was there, but I'm not there no more. I'm moving on. My cloud is moving. Come on, somebody help me today. You know, but you got to continually do that. See, the definition of a curse, it's a pattern. A curse is a fancy word for saying a pattern. You can have a negative pattern. You can have a, a positive pattern. I had a girl in my office many years ago, and she didn't want, not want to cooperate. She didn't want to listen. Her mother, she said, my mother made me come here. My mother made me come and see you and listen to you and, and, and all that. I mean, she was just arrogant. I thought, well, I don't want to be here with you either. But I love your mother, and I'm trying to help you. And she just didn't want to help me. And she says, what do you really know? She said that to me. And I said, Lord, help me. Help me, Holy Ghost, help me. So the Holy Ghost said, ask her about the blue Mustang. Ask her what happened in the back seat of the blue Mustang. <sighs> so I thought, should I get my armor on before I ask this question? And so I said, uh, can I ask you a question? She says, ask me anything, arrogant. Ask me anything you want. Go ahead. I said, the blue Mustang. She said, what you saying? I said, the blue Mustang. She said, what are you talking about? I said, you in the backseat of the blue Mustang. She said, I can't believe my mother told you that. I said, your mother never told me that. Well, then how would you know? I said, the Holy Spirit. Oh, so he's going to come out of heaven right in front of me. I didn't even see him. I said, I didn't either. See, people can't handle 
that you and I are connected to another dimension. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, you got to praise him today. That's where Abraham and Sarah's baby came from. See, that baby had to come from somewhere because she was, what, 90 with no, no, no eggs. He was 100 with no sperm. Come on, say, no sperm and no eggs. There's no ball game going on tonight. Come on. There's no dice going to be rolled. There's no way to get pregnant. But here he is without sperm, and here he because the Bible says clearly he was dead and the deadness of Sarah's womb clearly uses the word dead. They were just not, they were past the age. Oh my, they got to go get some modern stuff. All they got was God told them what? Call it in. Call it in. Are you calling it in? Are you complaining? Mm. How much do you believe? I'm here to tell you this morning, there is another dimension. I'm here to tell every one of you, there's access you have. You have the right code, you have the right password, you're just not using it. And you're waiting for someone to give you a break. I'm going to tell you, there's not too many people, not too many countries, cities, corporations, they don't want to give you anything, they want to take more from you. But there is a God in heaven, somebody say in heaven, who wants to give you the passcode to get into that other dimension and call in everything you need. It seems ludicrous, but that's where all body parts are. Arms, legs, ankles, spleens, livers, they're there. That's where there's so much money you can't even count it. That's where Abraham's and Sarah's baby came from. And the Bible said he began to call it in. Now, I know telling you this that you don't want to do this. I can tell you don't want to do this. Where did the food come from when the feeding of the thousands? Where did all that food come from when it multiplied? Where did that food come from and when it was just a couple of fishes and loaves? Where did, where did it all come from? That other dimension. All those miracles... When Peter fished and caught nothing, that's because there was nothing there. So when they did the net, because Jesus said so, where did those fish suddenly come from? Another dimension. We're not bound. We walk in two worlds at the same time. But if you want to unlock that world to you, you don't have to get into psychic. You don't have to go get your palm read. You don't have to get into hypnotism or some cultic leader, you're born again. When you got, oh, I'm telling you, when, ah, uh, when you got born again, you moved into another dimension. You're no longer bound or a prisoner to those five senses. Come on, somebody give him a shout. You're not bound and prisoner to five senses. I have to see it. I have to smell it. I have to touch it. I have to. That's what Jesus tried to tell Thomas. He said, yeah, you touched me yeah, and you believe it. Blessed are they that haven't seen me. Blessed are they that haven't touched me. And they still believe. Greater is their faith than your faith. I'm telling you today that you have access to a dimension where there's healing and health where there's money, but see, you want to go by the way the world does it. So as long as you do that, then look at what you have, that's what you get. But if you begin to believe what you don't see, oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. Like when they say you have cancer, and you can see the cancer, or you can see in the other dimension, but he, by his stripes I see my healing. Come on, say there's vision. And there's envision. You don't have to have a vision. You can envision it. You can just practice yourself. I see Calvary. I see an empty cross. I don't see a cross with Jesus still on it. I see an empty cross. I see an empty tomb. I see his hands and reached out to me. I hear his voice. 
when I read the Bible, I hear them. I just don't read to read, I read to hear. And as a matter of fact, when I read the Bible, when I see the part about Peter, he gets out of the boat, I see it. When it says, here comes Peter walking on the water, I, I, I see it. I'm reading, but I see. I'm reading, but I hear. All of a sudden, the Word of God is speaking to me. Come on, somebody. And then instead of saying, Peter, come unto me, I hear him saying, Billy, come unto me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Billy, come unto me. Billy, oh, ye of little faith. Billy, come on, if you can touch my hem. And if you really, really begin to practice this, you'll get healed more times than you could imagine. You won't worry about the money that you need. You won't worry about it. You'll say, my God, they're still making those cars. I'm going to get that house in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. I'm going to get a summer home in West Palm Beach, Florida. Come on, somebody help me. I'm going to get that new Volkswagen bus they made. I, that's, I'm going to get an electric one. I'm going to get electric things plugged right into my house. I'm going to go shopping today. There'll be no store tell me I can't come in. I told one lady, I said, stop being so stupid. She said, what do you mean? I said, why would you let a store tell you not to come in? I said, the next time a store tells you not to come in, walk right in. Walk right over to one of those jackets that you like and, and look at the price tag. And she said, but those clerks are going to bother. Then why would you let a clerk bother you? Act like you got enough money to buy the whole store. She said, some of those jackets in there are $700. Some of those jackets in there are 1000 I said, well, quit being so poor up here. Start acting like your father who owns a cattle on a thousand... Oh, come on, somebody. Start acting like your father can get you that money or get you that coat. He can have somebody else buy it and give it to you. That's how you begin to attract the anointing. What's that? You believe. How do you know you believe? Because you act like you believe. If you're acting like you don't have and you can't have... And you were born on the wrong side of the tracks, then you need to start growing some faith and say, man, I can live on any side of the tracks I want. And so a lady did that. She dumped, stomped at a Mercedes dealership. She said, I had a hard time doing it, but I tell you what, she said, I couldn't believe I was sitting in a brand new Mercedes. And she said, the roof was done. She said, I haven't smelt that kind of a car in my whole, my whole life. And I said, well, did you like it? She said, I love the smell of it. I said, well, what it, well, she said, I don't know about the rest of it, but she said, I just couldn't believe what it felt like and what it smelled like. She says, my God, I, yeah, I started thinking I could get this car. See, if you listen to God, not, I know I'm talking about things, and I'm not going to stay on things, but you've got to start somewhere. And pretty soon, if you can get things, you can get healthy. You don't have to turn out like your ancestors. You know, your one aunt, she walks hunched over. Your other aunt, you know, she just can hardly speak. Your uncle doesn't have any energy. And the devil says, that's your future. I'm not a prisoner to the bloodline. Come on, say, I'm not a prisoner to my bloodline. Say it again, I'm not a prisoner to my bloodline. I'm a prisoner of the Lord Jesus. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Now, what I have found that has to work for me, I just can't, I just can't not hear it. No, that's not true. I've got to answer back. No matter where I am, if I'm on a plane, if I'm in an Uber or a taxi cab, if I'm on my way to a meeting, I've heard, God, I've heard the devil speak to me and say, I don't know why you're going out to New York. There'll be no miracles in New York. <laughs> and sometimes you just say, shut up. Well, you don't know nothing. You're just mad because you got kicked out of heaven. You lost your name, your body, and your residence. You lost everything. Don't be picking on me. I'll put you under my feet or behind. Don't you do that. I'm a child of the most high. Come on, somebody. Come on, all you ladies, say, I'm the daughter of the most. 
hot. Come on, man, I'm, I'm a son of the most. Uh, well, men struggle with that a little bit. I don't know. You've got to answer some of these thoughts. You're a liar. That's not true. Did you ever drive down the road and a voice said, this next car is going to hit you? You're going to go over the bridge. There's a dinosaur coming in your house tonight. Your daughter's going to get raped living in New York. All those kind of voices. You can't afford to say nothing. You have to answer. There's people in New York, if you just get in front of them, they'll, they'll talk to you. I mean, they'll wind their window down and say, what the blank are you doing? <laughs> or they'll blow their horn. Or they'll pour a nine millimeter at you. Come on, somebody. Why do we put up with that when the devil's trying to tell you because he's going to take your life early? You'll never have a back that's healed. You'll never sleep all night again. And then he'll say something like this. Hey, you're not bad for 60. Quit complaining. You're not bad. There's people that are dead at 60. At least you're alive. Now, shut up with that halfway. Shut up with that compromise. I don't live in light of other people. Come on, say somebody, I want the whole thing. Come on. But you got to, if you don't answer that, if you don't speak out and answer that, with what the word is saying, then you're going to tolerate that, and then the devil's going to see he can just accumulate bad seed into your barn. And today it's about your health, and tomorrow it's about your money. Next week it's about your kids. And pretty soon you're just taking in all that because you're not doing anything. You just think I'm strong enough to, I'm just strong enough, I'm just strong enough, I'm just. We are not strong in our own power. Billy Burke is not strong in his own power. Jesus said these words. He said these words. I am utterly dependent upon the Father. I can do nothing. That's Jesus. Come on, say, I can do nothing in my own power. I'm utterly dependent on what Father says. If that's Jesus then how is any of us that strong in ourselves? Oh, my. I've been around those people. I've been around famous people to think they're all that till they get cancer, till they're busted in a drug sting or a sex sting. Then they find out, I'm, I guess I'm not that strong. Today, this morning, in this meeting, tonight, last night, the more you say, I need you. I think you sang it this morning, you're all I need. You never outgrow that. No matter how smart you get, no matter how big your house is, you know, no matter I'm 70 and rich, I've been around all that. And they're all that until something happens. And then they don't ask for whiskey. They don't ask for a smoke. They don't say, let me see another nude picture. You know what they say? Get me the preacher. Get me somebody that knows faith. Somebody that can shoot a spoonful of hope into my system and help me live to fight another day. You're all here this morning. I'm here this morning, not because we made all the right choices. And I know we're not here because we eat the right food. I do know that. <laughs> I can see it right around me. Come on, say amen. amen. Come on, say, I'm here. I'm alive today by the grace of Almighty God. Give him a hand clap right now. Come on. But you have to make up your mind who you are a prisoner to. Because these people out here, you don't think they're, they're powerful. They carry a presence. You may say that right now, but you've never been around some of these A-lister celebrities. And there's an aura. There's a power. Or some of these professional athletes. They, they have swag, but they have power. There's an aura about them. Why do you think they get to do all the things they get to do? They can just change the mind of policemen and mayors and senators. 
they can just make a, a good woman a bad woman. It's, am it's amazing to watch it. You know, and you and I have to be ready. Come on, say, I got to get ready. Come on, I got to get ready to hold up the shield of faith. I got to get ready to resist every fiery dart. I didn't come this far to quit. I didn't come this far to be overtaken. I didn't pay this price to give away my soul for free. I'm here to finish. I'm here to take no prisoners. I'm here to be an influencer. I'm here to walk strong and live long. Come on, give him a shout today. But to do that, and I, I believe everything you just said, I believe it. But you're going to have to, as I'm going to have to, make sure what am I a prisoner to. Well, Brother Burke, I don't know how you're going to keep that because I'm strong in the Lord. I'm not strong in me, but I'm strong in the Lord. Yeah, but how are you going to handle all that stuff that's going on? Because if he'll keep his mind in perfect peace if that mind is stayed on him. Amen. If I have my mind on everything that it shouldn't be, I'm going to be troubled. I'm going to be taking nerve medicine, sleeping pills. Might be cussing a few words every now and then. But if my mind is locked in on him, on his promise, if I get slain and I'm under the power, watch this, I'm under the power, but I get up different. It's not how you fall. It's how you get up. Come on, it's not how you fall. It's how you get up. And if that presence goes through you, and you, it's just God saying, I love you. I'm confirming I'm with you. I'm letting you know there's change coming to your life. You better get ready. You better get ready for increase. You've not known increase the way it's. You better get ready for favor. You better get ready for a life without a wheelchair, a walker, or a cane. You better get ready. You better get ready to hear without hearing aids and see without glasses and con. You better get ready. You better get ready to eat food you never thought of. The disciple said to Jesus, what makes you so strong? He said, I have a food you don't even know about. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Kenneth Hagin used to tell his people, I don't need an alarm clock. I've trained my spirit to get me up at a certain time. I don't need an alarm clock. And half the people that heard that went, oh, God, how do you do that? I'll sleep in every day. I can't even get up with an alarm clock. You can train your mind to say, don't look there. Don't read that. That's taboo. That'll take you down, down, down to the deeper levels of darkness. But this, this will take you up. I was in Jamaica years ago holding a crusade. And... Um, I'm trying to think how this all happened. The, uh, we maybe had a thousand people in this room. And I could see these people were really hungry, but they didn't have any basis for their belief. And I said, how many of you know that there's levels in heaven? I didn't even know why I said that. And, and ha all these hands went up about heaven. I said, do you know that there's a city that's going to be on the new earth? Heaven gets empty, we live on the new earth, and there's a city over on the Fertile Crescent, and the city is the bride, and there's believers that get to live in the city, and some live in the new earth, and they were just like, wow, wow. I said, how many of you want to know more about this? Well, they all raised their hand. I said, meet me under the peanut tree tomorrow, and on the property in, in Jamaica, this was near Kingston, Kingston, Jamaica. There was this huge peanut tree. I mean, it was huge. You could, put, you could put 300 people under this tree. I said, if you want to hear more about this, and as I was talking, I thought, dear God, you don't know that much about it yourself. But I knew more than they did. And I said, meet me under that peanut tree tomorrow at 1 o'clock, and I'm going to talk to you about the levels of heaven. And so I was with the team there. It took seven or eight people with me. 
And that night they said to me, uh, they said, we're all going out to eat somewhere and we want you to go with us. I said, ah, I got to study tonight. I got to study. They said, what do you got to study? Ah, levels of heaven, levels of heaven. I got to meet a bunch of people tomorrow under the peanut tree. These people showed up, not 100, not 200, not 300. I don't know where they all came. There were cameramen sitting in the trees <laughs> just to hear about something I didn't know that much about. And so I had to act like I did. I said, Lord, this is by faith. He said, don't you and I both know that. <laughs> so, so I went out there and I went to the peanut tree. I had a four or five hundred people. Under this, they, they, they exceeded the shade of the tree. And I began to talk about heaven and about their ancestors and about if you breathe your last breath, that babies go there, senior citizens go there, gang members go there, people you don't think go there because the love of God is so deep. I'm telling you, people began to cry. So I thought, I'm going to have an altar call. See, who here wants to be born again and make sure they have a reservation for this place? Every single hand, not many, not most, every single hand. And they began to scream, I want to go today. I'm thinking, dear Jesus, you can't go today. You can't I can take a reservation today, but you can't go today. They all got wonderfully saved. And come on, somebody give God a shout. <laughs> See, the gospel has got to become so appealing to you that it's no longer just a good idea. It's no longer just a good sermon. I want that health. I, I get injections. I have surgeries. You know, I take vitamins. I take so many vitamins. All of the alphabet is inside of me. Come on. <laughs> and, and, and you say, I, I would like in my lifetime. Come on, say, in my lifetime. <laughs> I would like to experience a miracle. Oh, my God. I would love to experience a miracle. I'd love to be able to look at the people that know me so well. And say, you know, I can't believe what happened to me. What happened to you? You know those rods I had in my back? Yeah, yeah. They've been there for 15 years. They're not there no more. Oh, did you have them removed? Kind of, sort of. What do you mean? I went to a meeting. This guy touched me. I fell down. They disappeared. I said, what did they say to you? They said, you're crazy. See, if people call you crazy as a Christian, it's one of the greatest things they could ever tell you. If they tell you that you've lost your mind, say, hallelujah, you're right. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on, somebody help me today. See, because if you can't say that, then you haven't experienced him enough. If they say, hey, it's sad what happened to you. I'm so sorry for the divorce. I'm so sorry you went through that. And it's been, what, five years. And then you look back and say, I don't think about it. I don't go there. It's not on my mind. It's not coming out my mouth. Oh, and by the way, I found a new person. And, and I'm just loving him. I just love, I'm just learning from the first bozo what to do with Boaz number two. Come on, can you say amen? I mean, and you begin to realize that things can change for the better. You can't judge your future by your past. Come on, say, I'm not going to be defined by the badness of my life. Let my testimony, come on, let my breakthrough, let the goodness of God define my life. Come on, give him a mighty, mighty, mighty praise here today. I mean, you, gotta, you have to become a prisoner to the promises. You've got to become a prisoner to the promises. Yeah, I can see here that the doctor says to you, yeah, I see here in your chart, your dad died when he was 53. Your mother died when she was 38. 
You know, we got to, and then you speak up and say, as my days, so shall my strength be. Mm. Oh, where's that at? That's in the Bible, doctor. That's in the Bible. When they tell you that your credit score is only a 4.9 and you don't qualify for a loan, say, well, if I don't get a loan here, I I'm going to get money somewhere. Well, I don't know where you're going to get it with that kind of credit score. I have a father. I come from my father's house. Come on, somebody. And he has more than I could ever hope to have. And I'm just going to go to heaven a little longer. And that's what you have to do. You can't just be mouthy. You just can't quote verses. That's not going to do it. Verses alone will not do it. You, you got to go to who wrote the book. See, too many people know the verses. How come I can't get healed? Because you know the verses, but you don't know him. Oh, I'm going to say that again. You know the verses. You know the songs. You know the stories, but you have yet to know him. Well, not, not somebody, somebody, I heard a preacher say, if you know the verses, you know him. Well, that's what the preacher said. No, there's a difference between being raptured and bumping into a book versus being raptured and bumping into a Savior. Now, you've got to know him. Well, how do you know anybody? This girl here, this lady here, this young man. How do you know these people? You talk with them. You use this magic letters, T-I-M-E. Come on, say T-I-M-E. Whether you're spending time with Giuliani or Trump or whoever you're spending time with or, or, or Aaron Rodgers, whoever you're spending time with, Madonna, Taylor Swift, come on, any country singer, you spend time with them, you'll get to know them. Like if I had you close your eyes right now, I'm not going to have you do that, but if I had you close your eyes right now, and I said, when I count to three, I want you to hear Elvis, half of you could do that. Why? Because you spend time. Over the years, hearing that voice over the radio, maybe over, over a cassette or over a, a CD. Today, there's a Savior, there's a healer that wants to get your undivided. And when you read that Bible, where's my Bible go? Let me see that. When you open up this book, the devil cries. I'm telling you, when you open up this book, demons just say, oh, no, hang on. And you turn over here to a healing scripture, or a peace scripture, or a strength scripture. This can heal Alzheimer's, dementia. When you tell the addiction you have to drugs right now, I'm no longer. Now, it's, Paul still looked like a prisoner. Zachariah still looked like a prisoner. But they defied it with their mouth. Come on, say, I'm not stuck in New York. I'm not stuck at a dead-end job. I'm not stuck in the past with some of the losers I lived with. I am not stuck. I am moving forward. I got a Savior, and He's a deliverer, and He's a healer, and He's going to restore my years. Come on, give him a thunder of praise. Come on, give him a thunder of praise. Come on, a thunder of praise. I mean, you got to get so fired up, you feel the heat. You got to get so fired up that you're going to say, I'm going outside these doors and change something. I'm going to do something different today. And the best thing you could ever do and it's in your power to do it. And you don't have to spend a dime to do it. You start talking. People that get drunk on whiskey and wine talk out loud to people all the time. You can see them in the creek good and down here to Manhattan or along the streets of Flatbush. And you'll see them all the time just playing that, a, a piano. But there's no piano. They have a box there for money, and you don't hear nothing. They just playing an air piano. Come on, somebody. 
You go in Central Park and they're playing the air drums. And they want paid for it. They want you to believe that they're playing drums. And us Christians, we just walk on by. We got to quit walking on by. We got to grab some scripture. Come on. We got to grab the hem of his garment. Somebody help me. We got to grab a hold of destiny. We got to grab a hold of what God has for us. And he has for you to be healed on the inside. Not just your body. Not just your arthritis. Not just your carpal tunnel. But the brokenness. What you thought was supposed to be that went wrong. Because if you don't get a hold of that, it'll get a hold of you. And you'll live your life with this in mind ever since that marriage, ever since that guy at that job, ever since that actor was coming through here and I met him down here at the club and I just fell heads over heels over the wrong person. Ever since I allowed that to happen. Man, you don't want that way. That's why Jesus came. To touch the leper and take away leprosy. To touch the devils and get that person free. Legion had 6,000 devils in them. That's how many a legion is. It's 6,000 soldiers. And when legion saw him afar off, all those devils couldn't keep this man from running to Jesus. Say this out loud if you want to. If you want to get to God, there's nothing that can hold you back. And he drug 6,000 demons to church and fell at the feet of the master. And I mean in a matter of 30 seconds, Jesus said, come out of him, you unclean spirit. And that man got so set free. He got his right mind. And the politicians of that city came out and they said to Jesus, get the blank out of here. We don't want you changing our town. We like having these kind of crazy people around. Makes the rest of us look sane. <laughs> See, people live their life in levels. I'm not as bad as her. I'm not as unruly as him. I'm kind of loose living, but I'm not that bad. And we measure ourselves against each other. God says, I don't want you measuring yourself against each other. Measure yourself against me. Come on, I've come to give you the way and the truth and the life, and it's not too late. Your mother told you about this. Your grandmother told you about this. But somehow the shark got in your pool with the music. Da-da, da-da, da-da. It's time to kill the shark. Come on, somebody give God a thing. Time to kill the shark. Put your hands up all over the place today. It's time to get this stuff settled. It's time to let the Holy Ghost heal you, strengthen you. It's time to say yes to God. Your will, your way. It's time to not be driven by memories that make you bitter, that keep you a prisoner of the past. Accept the new path you're on. Nurture the newness in your life. Be thankful you're still alive to do that. All those people in Maui, it's happened so quick. All the people here at the trade centers, the buildings fell so quick. They never had the freedom to choose the present over the past. Today, God's giving you another opportunity to forgive a lot of people that have been wrong with you, unfair with you. They cheated you out of this, miserly their ways out of that. Today, you're not going to carry people baggage. You're not going to carry memory baggage. Today, you're getting yourself ready to be healed on the inside, healed on the outside. 
you're getting ready to fly with the Holy Spirit. The Trinity taking you through space. The favor's about to fall. I'm telling you, favor is falling. He fell last night. He's falling this morning. Increase is coming to your house. Favor is coming to your house. Some of you are about to upgrade. Some of you are about to take on a job, on a responsibility you never dreamed you would qualify for. This is the hour for God taking people out and putting the right people in. Come on, shout it. I'm that right person. Say, say I'm that right person. I take it now. I receive it right now. I, come on, I got it right now. Devil, take your hands off of God's property. Get out of my space. This is a miracle space. I'm going to live long and strong. I'm going to break the curse right here, right now. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him a shout. Give him a mighty, mighty, mighty praise. There's a mighty power working right here. Right here. Bring me that lady in the green right there. The lady in the green. I heard there's a lady that drove all the way from, is it her? I didn't know that. She came how far? How far did you come? The border of Canada. A thousand, I've been to it. I've been. I've been to a thousand islands. I did a crusade there. Gananoque, Gananoque. Can, you're 10 or 15 minutes from Gananoque get over there yeah. with all the passports and COVID and everything. So. Yeah. so what are you fighting? Why have you come this far? What do you need? Well, I'm 90. You're 90. <laughs> that should tell you a lot right there. And me be Every hand up. He touched me. Let's sing it. He touched me. Something under her head. Singing, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy. Bring her to me. 
90 years old, and she still wants to be better. There's a lady that hasn't quit. She just said God has more for her. This lady will eat your lunch, I'm telling you. She'll steal your banana, your pear, and your grapes if you turn your head. She is here to get us. 90 years old, coming from the border. Oh, the power's all over you. Power's all over you. From when someone's being healed of fibromyalgia. Where are you? Fibromyalgia being wonderfully healed. Pain all through the muscles. Is it that lady right there? Is that you, ma'am? Fibro. Come on, get that woman here. Fibromyalgia. Ma'am, the power's going to go all through you. You'll never have it again. You'll never have, you'll never have it again. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Something happened, and now I know He touches me and me. I want all of you that are catching to make sure you catch the people before they hit the floor. Please, I'm just asking you to make sure. We want to make sure. Oh, this is amazing. Isn't this amazing? Amazing. I know we have tonight, 7 o'clock, but I, I just know there's a few more people. God, how are you doing? From last night, how are you doing? My neck knee is, is, is really good. It's really good. Yes, yeah. From last night. Yes. Let me interpret really good for you. Heal. Let me interpret that. You could yeah, what? I could run on she that. She could together. run on that. Amazing. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus, Jesus is, all is all I need. Come on, every hand up. Tell him today. He's all I need. Somebody help me here. He's all I need. Jesus. Jesus. Here's all I need. Sing, I love him so. I love him so. Everybody. I love him so. Jesus. Jesus. The power on her. Get up! Rick, she cannot stand. I love, I love him so. so. Come on, every voice. I love him so. Jesus, Jesus I love him so. I, I, Jim, what happened here? I didn't see her fall. I was, I was in the alleyway, and she just... Oh, I did. But when did she fall? It was a del what? See, see, you don't even fall when you're supposed to. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like hitting a tree and thinking, oh, nothing happened. Then you walk away and the tree falls on you. I'm telling you, God is faithful. I'm telling you, God is faithful. And some of you are going to feel this even more when you get in the car. You're going to go to get out of the car, just like when I moved my hand and I was inside that other sleeve. I'll tell you, that, that jarred me a little bit. I, I, I'd never experienced that. As soon as I told the crowd that, they, there was a rush to the altar because they knew. Number one, I don't lie. I don't embellish. Anything I say to you is documented, can be proven. I don't need to lie. I was near dead twice. 
at death's door because of cancer twice. They told me no way, no hope as a boy and as a man. I'll tell you what, God has proven himself to be faithful. And he don't love me any more than he loves you. You got to reach for him, though. Come on, you got to reach. You can't just sit and be nothing. You can't just say, well, my mother loves me. No, you got to know God loves you. Come on, there's nobody bigger than God. And that guy with the green hat, I can't get my eyes off of that guy back there with the green hat. Come on, buddy, you with the big guy with the green hat. Right there, yeah, come on. Get up here. Get that guy up here at the coat. He might have to give that in the offering. I don't know that green hat. Get him up here. I want to know about this guy. I want to know about him. What are you here for, young man? What brings you to this meeting? Um, I was just expecting God to touch my brother and I and provide for us. Provide for you? What do you need provision for? We're going into our new semester for college. Where at? Nassau Community College. Nassau? That's right on your Long Island. Yes. What are you going to study? Liberal arts, but I want to go into physical therapy and athletics coaching. My brother, he's into architecture. Where's your brother at? He's at work right now. He's at work right now. What? He's what? He's working You're the one that hurt your hand. Yeah, no, yeah. It was brother. my hand. It was my hand. That yeah. was your hand. Yes, sir. How's it right now? Very flexible. He, he got drive. healed. Yes, he got oh, healed. Oh, somebody give God a shout. That mighty power. I don't even... Come on, give God a shout. Hey, can you know how to yell in this room? We rented this room so you could yell. We rented this room so you could get excited. We rented this room so you could jump a little, shout a little, laugh a little, cry a little. Come on, somebody. Do you know what holds your body back is not being alive in your emotions. Well, my dad wasn't alive. Well, exceed your dad. Just because he didn't have all three parts working don't mean you don't have to have three all parts working. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. Get them all in harmony. You'll think you went to heaven. You won't even have to go to a ball game to cheer. You, you'll laugh over the craziest things. The simplest things in life will just take you, exceed you to great emotional ecstasy. It's amazing, the joy of the Lord. I'll tell you. Where, where did your, where, who's this? Was that your wife? Yes. Where, she's down there. The anointment is too strong. What, where do you come from, sir? Nagatak, Connecticut. Nagatak, Connecticut. Connecticut, what do you do there? I'm a minister. You're a minister. Do you have a church? I'm prepared to plant another church. You I what? plant two churches. You just planted two churches. Now I'm going to plant another one. And now you're going to plant some other churches. Oh, but the power's all over you. I said the power's all over you, sir. I said that's the anointing of the Holy Ghost on that man. Come on, somebody. It's on his wife and it's on, they're going to be a dynamic duo, I'll tell you what. Get ready, Nassau. Get ready, Long Island. Get ready, Stanton Island. Get ready, Manhattan. Get ready! Woo! Wow. Put your hands up. You're about to get fresh fire, it's called. On, on Mount Carmel, the fire was so hot, it burnt the bricks. It burnt the sacrifice. You know what it did? It burnt the water. Guess what it did? It fired up the wet wood. God's getting ready to, to fire up the wet wood of the church. Water-soaked people. Can't go anywhere. God's about to hit a fire from heaven. And you're going to want to do things you never thought you would do. You're going to volunteer. You're going to give your money. Come on. You're going to give testimony. You're going to give your life for the work of this gospel. Come on. Say the wet wood's about to burn. Come on. Oh, come on the wet wood. Get out of yesterday. 
Get out of yesterday. Leave Paul McCartney go with yesterday. Get out of yesterday. Get into today. Come on, say, now is salvation. Now is the hour of visitation. Now is my new season. I won't let my past rob me of my present. I'm in it. Now faith is. Come on, give him one more shout. Oh! Put your hands up. There's a new strategy coming to you. I lost everything. You lost everything. Everything. How'd you lose it? God took every, everything to test me. To test you? Well, For almost me. 19 years, I lost three houses, two companies, everything. In the end, my health. And your health? I put a foot in the coffin, a foot in the graveyard. And now he said, now is the end. I'm, I'm going to take just, just a minute. So what about a graveyard and a coffin? I was dying. You were dying. I was dying. Okay. I was getting blind. Rectal bleeding. Rectal bleeding. Yeah. And too many things. Too many. Too many. My body was dead. Diabetes, arthritis, pelvic muscle pain. So tell me what happened. What happened? God said that He's gonna test me in the desert. In if the I really love love Him, because He's God, or because He's given me things. And he said, you pass. I will reward you for everything now. Oh, my gosh. The power. The Holy Ghost is on you. I'm telling you again, sir. There's a portion on you that most people could never handle. Gift you have. Healing. That's what he promised me. Strong. The anointing is, is strong. The fire is, is strong. strong. Your name is high. Name Come on, than any other. Than any other. Come on, your name. Your name is Jesus. Your name. Your, your name. name is Lord. But I call you. I call you Lord. I'm telling you, this is Saturday morning tonight. By tomorrow night, it's going to be hard to stand in here. We're going to have to put catchers all through the audience. There'll be people just falling out under the. We might have to just. I don't know. You better get reservations here for Sunday night because we're streaming. Phone calls are coming in. There's more people here. It's growing. I want you here. Make it a priority to be here. Get, get part of it today, part of it tonight. You know, the Bible says little by little till the breakthrough comes. That's the scriptures. Come on, little, little by little till the breakthrough comes. However you have to get it. However you have to get it. Some people like to eat the whole pie. Some people like to take a little bit. Women like a little bit, but they like a little bit six times. Come on, can you say amen? They still... <laughs> they, they, they still end up with the whole pie. Your name is higher than any other. Than any other. Look at this Holy Ghost. Let her go. Don't own her. Power's on. That's the power on you, Liz. That's the power on you. Your name, Your name is Lord. Lord. Come on, everybody, let's do it. Come on. Your name. Your name. I 
That guy with the green hat is going to this university. Look at me, sir. Look at me. The guy with the green hat, wave at me. Money will be no problem for you. It's already moving your way. Somebody say cha-ching. Say it one more time. No, one more time. Cha-ching is coming your way, big boy. Amazing. Pastor, as I was saying, new strategies. You know, you're, you're a brilliant, you're an anointed man, you're an entrepreneur. God's bringing all of your skill set together for this hour. You've got a big heart. Your wife, you're a team. Don't ever let anything get between you two. You hear me? No, no strange women, no, none of that stuff coming your way. You stay with this lady. She's given her life for you. And you've given for her. How long? 30 years together. 30 years together. Yes. You love her yes. with all your heart. Yes. See, people are going to feel that. Yes. You're going to strengthen yes. people just because of that. Yes. Get ready for this. He's not testing you with what you think. He's testing this marriage. It's going to be strong to go the distance. Do you hear me? Put your hands up. Put your hand. Everybody put your hands up with this man. I'm going to pray for a few more people here this morning. You know, we want to get an offering here, so don't run out the doors when we take the offering. I need a few of you here. A few of you have the power to write a sizable check. That's what we need. We can, there's people that don't have any money. Don't let this meeting and the burden fall on the pastor. That's not right. You came to take, but give what you can. Come on, your money has no color to it. There's no racial tensions in money. We all bleed the same color of blood. Come on, say, we're brothers and sisters. Say it. Come on, say, we're all part of the same kingdom. We're here for a revival in New York. I don't know how long we're going to be here. We're here till tomorrow night. We may have to reschedule. I don't know. But something's taking place right here. Come on, big guy. Right back here. You, shaking your You get up that, get that guy up here. I don't know who he is, but he looks like he's important. Come on. He looks important. I don't know what he does. What do you do, sir? What do you do? Do you work where? With the country? Security company. Security company. Yeah. How long have you been with them? Maybe around three years now. Three years. Right back from my country. I'm a master degree holder. What country is that? Nigeria. Nigeria. Put your hands up, sir. There's a miracle going all through your body. Your eyes, your mouth, every part of your lungs is being wonderfully touched by the master. He is the master healer. And he's moving in you right now. You're going to see better than you've ever seen out of both eyes. You're going to taste better and smell better and hear better. You're going to tell people, God touched me and God touched me in that service. Come on, give them a shout tonight. I don't know who's here. I don't know how many is excited. I don't even know. My God, this is amazing. It's amazing. Give this pastor a strategy. The same way you gave the apostle Paul. He reached all over the world in his day. He, he fulfilled the Great Commission single-handedly in his day. All of Asia Minor. He put a footprint everywhere. And where he did not go, his message went. God's about to give you a global strategy. He's about to start with the whole Northeast. I mean to tell you, get ready, young man. God's about to do some great and mighty things with you and your wife. It's going to be shocking. The doors that's going to open are not just Pentecostal doors. There's something about you. You radiate this sovereign love of God. Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic, Church of God. It's all coming into this man. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Hey! What's going on here, ma'am? Talk to me. I have cancer. What kind of cancer? Oh, 
ovarian. Ovarian. Do you know I've seen a lot of people healed of ovarian? Come on. I don't want you to be afraid. I'm not here just to slap you to see you fall, okay? I'm here to talk to you. This cancer can't take you. Look in my eyes. Am I lying to you? Do you hear the truth? He's healing you. Every symptom. What's the main symptom you have? What's the main thing? Is it hurting now? No, I no. have more than one. Is I it have, hurting now? I have ovarian stomach cancer and is, liver cancer. Is it hurting? Not presently. Not right now. I wonder why it's not hurting right now. Do I have any support out there? This cancer likes to drop people off and then pick them up as they go home. Or it likes to leave you here and then meet you at home. Come on, everybody say here, here. There, there, and the highway. the highway. I'm healed in every place. Come on, give God a power of the Holy Ghost. Yes! Well, he's moving all through your body. Into that stomach here. Into the, all the soft tissue. Every part of your soft tissue is being wonderfully touched. There's somebody with a bowel obstruction. You've been having pain. I believe it's on the right side, but there's a bowel obstruction. You better get up here. I'd rather you get healed than have surgery. If you come up here, you keep your clothes on. If you go to the doctor, you've got to take your clothes off. Get up here. Come on, hurry. Is it, where's she at? Here she comes on the far side. The bowel obstruction. Get her over here to me. This is a bowel obstruction. How long have you had this, sweetheart? When God calls a word, it's not maybe. When God calls a word, it's not next year. When God calls a word, He has started that work right now. It's happening now. Oh! My God! Can you believe it on Saturday morning that God is moving in this university? That's, that's, that's what God does. He wants to avoid you having to go through. But you got to be humble enough to come in here and say, help me, Jesus. you got to quit hiding in the crowd, thinking you're too good for the crowd. There's nobody here too good for the crowd. Get that out of your head right now. Get the priss right out of you. You're not too prissy. You got to come here and get humble today. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Holy Ghost, fall on me. Ah! You got to tell the devil you can't have me. You got to start talking. I'm not a prisoner to this stuff. That stronghold that's been in your head talking to you, lying to you. Nobody in church loves you. Shut up. Shut up. The preacher don't love you. Shut your mouth. You keep talking to me. I'll put the blood of Jesus on you. Come on, you keep talking to me. I, I'm just going to release a wave of the anointing. I'll put the glory on you. Get a muzzle on those devils. Oh, my God. Send them into the... Well, what uh, bowel issues. Bowel issues. That's you. Yes, I have bowel issues, yes. Oh. I'm about a little over five years now. What did the doctor say? Well, um, I, I had um, polyps. And they polyps. Had and they had caught it. And I didn't That's do... That's a precursor, polyps. Sorry. But I didn't do exactly what the doctor said. I forgot if you would leave right now and go to the hospital and say, give me an MRI, they would give you an MRI, and then God would give you an H-E-A-L-E-D. That's what's happening to you. Come on, give God a shout. Come on, say, my faith is rising. I'm liable to get something good. I'm going for the top shelf. I'm not on the bottom any longer. I'm on the top. 
I'm the head, not the tail. I'm the borrower. No, I'm the lender. I used to be the borrower. Woo. What's happening here? What's happening? I've had so many issues and I've gone to so many doctors and they just don't want to see me and don't want to, um, uh, they just don't want to address it. They just keep passing me around and around um, for what's going on. So I'm in constant pain. Are you um, in pain now? I'm not in pain now. She's not in pain now. It's just, it's been a, just a horrible experience for me. See, the battle will be when you leave the room today. Then, then you kick back in. Because that out there seems like, well, that's the real world. No, in here's what's real. These songs, this presence, this spirit. This is kingdom stuff. Jesus said it's not with observation. This is for people of faith. So when you leave here, you got to be so fired up. You just tell them when you get in your car, just tell all the devils to get out of them. Just get out of my trunk. Get out of my engine. Get off of my car. I'll drive this till I don't want it no more. My car's on its last leg. Oh, stop talking like that. God's going to give you the faith to go buy it, go believe for it, or go believe it's going to be given to you. I like what Jesse says. God says, didn't tell you to, 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 to buy it. He told you to believe for it. Believe for something before you buy it. I like that. I like that phrase. This is, your, this is the graveyard today. Not for you, but for what's had you. Amen. Amen. Those horses followed Moses into their graveyard. They didn't know by chasing the man of God that they were going to end up dead. They thought, we're going to get him. We're catching up on him. They didn't know that man, that meek man that was a, a slave in Egypt. That, that man that, that he was going to hold his hand out and his rod and close the sea. And it became a watered graveyard. What's happening here? Oh, Lord, that's the pastor's wife. She's under the power. Let me see her. Oh, look at She's vibrating. Look at this. I need a worker right here. She's just vibrating. This would be on and off of this woman right here. When I ask for the offering today, I don't want any hesitation. Don't you look at me like that. Look what God's doing. This, you can't even afford this today. Got to do your, put your hands up. I'm going to pray right now. I want, you to, I want you to hear me. This is what determines whether we see more tonight and tomorrow. People pay for shows here in New York. They fly in, go to shows. They go eat at uh, Junior's Cheesecake at Times Square. They go to Piccadilly, pay enormous prices at Piccadilly. Listen to me. This here can't be bought. I'm not asking you to try it. I'm asking you to give out of what monies God has given you to help these meetings continue. You're setting the table for other... Oh, that's it right there. You're setting the table for other people. Come on, help me set the table. Come on, say it. Help me. Set the table for some other people. Mm. Master, talk to each person. I pray you talk to each person here this morning. Oh, I give you such praise for the healings, the deliverances. I thank you we're not slaves or prisoners to the past, to our circumstances, but we're prisoners of the Lord in Jesus' name. Come on, I want you to sit down. Get your checks handy right now. Come on, get your monies out. Make your checks payable to, make your checks payable to Abiding Word Ministries. Come on, Abiding Word Ministries. Do the very, very best. You can. Help me. I mean, some of the people left. I, I couldn't get to the people quick enough. I mean, I, I had to go where people need help first. Tonight, we'll probably do the offering at the very beginning. But right now, this morning, do your very best. 
You just have to check with my husband. Oh, he'll like you. He'll do it anyhow. Just check. Just do it. Do it. Do the best you can. Give credit card. Right on here, there's a place for it. Give your debit card. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. What a day. What a morning. Oh, my. This is amazing. Yes. 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 Let me get to her. Let me get to her. Come on. Come on. This lady is fighting the fear of cancer. Come here. Bring her to me one more time. Did you hear what I said to you? Yeah. This power is moving through. The, he's touching all that soft tissue. Okay. Come on. Put your hands up. You've got to help me. Okay. I've received. I've received. My healing. My healing. I believe it. I believe This cancer you. cannot stay. This cancer cannot little stay. Little by little. Little by There'll little. There'll be no pain. No There'll be no symptoms. There'll be no I'm going to live out my days I'm gonna live out my in days. Jesus' name. In Jesus Come on, name. give God a big shout. Come on. Yes, ma'am. What's happening here? He cannot talk. I am his mother. He's 10 years old. His brain damaged. So he, he what now? His brain is damaged. The part of brain the damage? Brain How did he get brain damage? Uh, it's autism, but it's a brain damage. I'm sorry, sir. Oh. Nonverbal. So doctor says it's a part of the brain damage. That's why he, he can't say anything. Attend. Mama, daddy, no, no. nothing. And how old is he? Ten years old. A year old. You want to hold him? I'm going to put my hand on his throat. I don't want him to be afraid. He may never go to church again. If he, you see, he this this thing knows in him what I'm about to do. And Holy Ghost, we give you praise over this little boy. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. We break that spirit, the deaf and the dumb. We break the dumb spirit. Be thou, be thou loosed. Be thou loosed. Be thou loosed. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Powers on them. I choose to believe the powers on them. Oh my God! Anointing. Oh. Bring him up. Bring him up. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey, look here, look here, look here, look here. He won't look at me. Man. Yes. <laughs> baby, 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 simple syllables, baby, baby, baby. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Baby. 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 Yeah. Put your hands out to the boy. Come on, everybody. All over the place. We thank you, dear Jesus. I'm believing progress this afternoon. I want you back here. We're going to see progress. Come on, give God a big shout. Come on, all over the place. I'm not brushing him off. I'm letting the seed of faith work. Jesus walked away from a tree that didn't move. And he said, I'm going to let my words work. Say that. I'm going to let my words of faith work. See, if you don't let your words of faith work, then you think you're the one doing it. What's going on here? Dialysis? I've been pee in three, three years. I've been urinating in three years. I've in been three on years. dialysis for three years. I go to dialysis three times a week. Do you believe you're going to get healed today? Yes, sir. Is yes. that why you're yes. here? Yes. Ah, the Holy Ghost. Woo. That's why you're here. You're not here to fall. You're here to get healed. 
By his stripes you fall, but by his stripes you're healed. Come on, say, I'm healed. healed. Go for the healing. Whether you stand or whether you fall, go for the healing. What's going on, dear sweetheart? Kidney failure. I've had two transplants and they fell. And now they say I need a new one. New kidney transplant. You have a so kidney I'm transplant. That two. failed already. Two of them. They failed. failed. Yeah. So you and don't I, have any kidneys? No. I'm going to dialysis. I'm supposed to go to dialysis after. Three times a week? Or? Yes. We, I ha we've had so many, and I'm not exaggerating, so many grow kidneys grow lungs I would not tell you that if it wasn't true and I believe you're going to grow kidneys here's what I'll tell you and here's what the doctors are going to say to you they're not normal size pay attention please ma'am I don't want you to get upset because they're not regular size they're going to be God kidneys the size isn't going to matter. Are they working? These kidneys will appear one, and then they'll appear the other one six months later. And they'll be different sizes. They won't be balanced. But they're going to be functional. And they're going to keep you alive. Come on, say, I'll take it. I'll take it. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, give him praise. Yes, ma'am. I have um, the doctor just um, say I the have. The doctor say what? I have um, inflammation, but everything I eat and drink, I'm really painful. All the power's all over you. I feel it. Stomach. I feel the power. I don't care what the doctor Thank said. I feel the no, power. No, I don't believe it. I feel the Holy Ghost on this woman. I just feel, wow. Hey, sir, how do you feel? I feel great. What do you mean great? I feel great. You're, you're laughing. Come on, you laugh. I'm great. Oh, I, I, I'm supposed to go to dialysis on Tuesday, but I, I believe I'm healed, so amen. And Jesus, I adore. Come on, and Jesus, Jesus I adore. Everybody. Jesus, Jesus I adore. Your Come breathe, come breathe upon me, breath of, breath of God, breathe upon me, breathe upon me. Spirit, Spirit of the Lord. Of the Lord. What, can, you, can you hardly believe this? Can you hardly believe it? I had an accident in November uh -huh. and I spent several, about several days in the hospital and also in the rehabilitation and I put your videos day and night. Day and night on a video. It had helped you. And someone called me also from the... And what? Uh, someone, Evelyn, called me from the... Yes. And and pray so for where do you and your husband live? Where are you, is this your husband? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And where do you guys live? Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. We're fishing in the Brooklyn today. Boy, the power's on you. Are you ready for this? Yes. I think she's ready. What do you think? That mighty holy God. Oh, be gentle. Oh, yeah. I want something under her head. Under her head. Get that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's your wife's name? What's your wife's name? Alma. Elma, the Holy Ghost is moving through you. I mean, I'm talking about all this inflammation is leaving your body, your muscles, your joints. You're going to be, you're, this, God's going to turn back time on you. He's turning back time. She'll be chasing you around the kitchen tonight. Yes. <laughs> You'll be saying, thank you, Jesus, for that service. That injury, the trauma is leaving your body too. The trauma. You won't rehearse this anymore. What you will rehearse is this meeting here this morning. The day that God touched your body. The day that the Holy Spirit fell on you. The day that you became a prisoner of Jesus himself. Come on, give God a shout.
Oh. Wow. Did we have the buckets up here for the offering? Did we take the offering? We took it? Did we take the offering? Are you sure? I didn't see those buckets moving around. They did? You passed the buckets? How many gave? Let me see. Oh, we got to pass it again. What's the matter with it? We got to pass it again. I didn't see all the hands go up. Oh, yo, yours is, okay, there's your gift right there. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. You got touched here this morning. Come here, come here. Bring those blue glasses up here. Come on. Those are pretty glasses. I like them. Oh, let the Son of God enfold you with His Spirit and His love. Let it Let him have the things oh, of the actually three eczema melasma and um, dermatitis and it's all over her body she's gone to so many dermatologists and they can't heal her and she's done so many prescriptions and creams and nothing and she's just falling into do you have a cell phone with you I have a picture do you have a number for that sister in Puerto Rico I have her number you have her number yeah I have her picture this beautiful right girl center. beautiful girl right give me this picture yeah. put your hands up this begins to change today. I need some help in here today. Come on. How many believe from New York to Puerto Rico that something can happen right now? Come on. Wow. I pray, Holy Spirit, you touch this girl right here. I'm touching her by photograph. But dear Jesus, I pray you touch her. Right there, Puerto Rico. Right there. Right there. As her sister stands in faith, touch her. Oh, there's a power moving here. It's not the prayers, ladies and gentlemen. It's believing the prayers. It's not singing. It's not praying. It's not falling. It's believing. Come on, say, you got to believe. You got to believe. You're nervous. You know why you're nervous? Because you're about to see a miracle. Are you coming tonight? Um, I'm going to come tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. Okay, whenever you come, I want to hear about this sister right here. And her name is? Kayla Michelle Vivera. Kayla who? Kayla Michelle Vivera. Michelle Vivera. And what nationality is that? We're Puerto Rican. That's Puerto Rican. Yeah. Did you ever go to Fuente um, uh, Agua Viva? Fuente Agua Viva in uh, San Juan? The big 10,000 seat church? No, Pastor Font? Never, Rodolfo Font? Never, never. never. Interesting. She wants you to go to Puerto Rico. She was like, you got to go tell him to come to Puerto Rico and do a crusade out there. Well, I've been to Isabella. I've been yes, to Vega Baja. Yeah. Baya Mayo. Yes. Mayo Guayas. Yes. I've been to all those. Yes. My sister lives in Humacao. Where? Humacao. Humacao. Yeah. I went there. No, I, know. <laughs> I went there. And she goes to a good church there? 
No, right now she's not going to church. Well, she's going to go. I don't know. I'm always telling her, go to this church, go to that church. But she's just, she, she's embarrassed and ashamed of her skin. People, people treat her as an outcast. It's outcome. going to change. Come on, say, now you see it. Now you see it. And now you don't. Now you don't. How can you say that, Faith? Yes. I have my request. So um, back in 2018, I had double jaw surgery and genioplasty oh. to correct my overbite. And um, it didn't go so well, the healing. So then I had to go back into surgery um, last year, October of 2022, to take out the screws and plates on my right side and remove the genioplasty. And now I'm in a worse condition because now I have TMJ. Now I have an open bite and now my whole entire jaw and chin is not in perfect alignment. I have a, I have a consultation appointment um, in three days uh, in um, August 22nd to see another oral surgeon. And I'm just afraid that it's just gonna get worse. No, um, no. And I'm just, I don't know what to do anymore. You're here. I'm, You're yeah, here. Yeah, I'm here. And I'm just like, God heal me because I don't want to go into the hands of another surgeon and just ruin me even more because I have all these issues and there's many nights that I can't even sleep. There's so many things that I can't even eat. I don't even like looking at myself in the mirror. I'm ashamed of what they did to my face. It just Number one, there's nothing wrong with your face. There's nothing wrong with you. I know you're conscious of that. But I want you to let the now moment overshadow everything. You're here, so that will never dominate you. You're not a prisoner to any of that. Put your hands up. Come on, put your hands up. Every hand up. Come on, we're coming to a close here so quickly. I hate to close this. I hate to close this. Come on. Yes, there's something about that name. Come on, sing his name. His name is Jesus. Jesus. His name is Jesus. Jesus. There's just something. Come on, everybody, come on. Everybody, everybody, everybody. everybody. That name. He's my master. Master. Savior. Jesus. Like Come on, after the rain. After the rain. Come on, his name. Jesus. 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 Let all heaven and earth, and earth proclaim. Come on, kings and kingdoms. They'll all, they'll all pass away, but there's but something, there's something about that name. Well, the power's on you, ma'am. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. It's over. It's over. It's over and it's out of you. It's out of you. It's been deleted. It's been deleted. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I got him. I touched him. Believe now, believe. Gotta believe. Gotta believe. Oh my. What a morning this has been. Every hand up, come on, every hand up, please. Come on, say, Dear Jesus, I love you. I need you. I accept you as my only Savior. There's no other God. I worship no one else. Only Jesus. 
can satisfy my soul. Live in my heart. Build your kingdom. Teach me your ways. Show me your mighty works. And cause me to make you my source. And cause me, Lord, to be a worshiper. A full-time worshiper. And I will serve you. And I will give to you. And I will trust you. However this plays out, I'm going to go God's way. I'm going to do God's work all the days of my life. Come on, let's give God a big shout. Come on. Come on, give Him a big shout. Come on, I mean a mighty, mighty, mighty shout. Oh, my word. Now, what I want... What I want you to do is pay attention. This isn't just to make a bunch of noise. You've got to check when you leave here, maybe before you leave here, that arm. Is it any better? Those, that vision. This, take your glasses. Lift them up a little bit. And look, is anything any better? If you're wearing a brace, you want to go take that off when you get home. And Is that any better? You never know what happens in His presence. Things change. Things change. When you turn your eyes upon Him, the Bible says the things of earth grow dim. Let's sing that song. Turn your eyes. Could we sing that song? Turn your, your eyes upon Jesus. Look forward. Look forward in His world. The things of earth and the things of earth will grow strangely in, in the light of His glory and grace. One more time, come on, everybody! One more time, turn your eyes. Give God a big shout. Can you do that today? Come on, give him a mighty, mighty, mighty shout. Now, let me tell you before I dismiss you, here's what I believe. You're going to walk out of here and you're going to feel different. And you're going to, what, what? I just feel different. He's on you. It's a period of grace that God rests upon his people to get you to think a little different, make a better choice, and make a decision that you're never going back to where you were. Come on, say, I've crossed the line of no return. Where I was, I don't want to go again. I'm free, and I want to be free indeed. Let's give him one more praise. Come on. Come on, one more praise. Don't forget, tonight's meeting is at 7 o'clock. There's a meeting here tomorrow with the church at 10. Excuse me, our final crusade meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. I'm, I'm just, well, I don't know about tomorrow night. I'm, I'm, I might have to say some extra prayers for tomorrow night. I don't know. I've never heard of a word, word gooder, but if it gets any gooder, I don't know what I'm going to do. The healings we've had here. And those that have yet to happen. But nothing is greater than you believing that things are about to change for you. Come on, put your hands up and say, change is coming. There's nothing the devil can do about it. Change is coming. 
nothing my enemies can do about it. I will laugh in the face of my accusers, of my enemies. I will have the last laugh as I cross that finish line. Come on, give him one more praise. And he walks with me. Come on. And he walks with me and he talks with me. And he says, Remember tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is an impartation service for everyone. Remember, tomorrow night, Sunday night, the last service is an impartation night. Make sure you're here. Remember to bring your handkerchief and I want to place them on the altar like you announced yesterday. All right, we'll see you tonight, back here tonight at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6 p.m. All right, we'll be back here tonight. God bless you and have a wonderful.